In this video, we're going to do this really cool related rates problem that's going to end up involving the law of cosines. This problem is about an engine, but you don't really need to know anything about how engines work, except understand that this radius piece called a crankshaft is going to be rotating counterclockwise. And as it's rotating, it's going to be pushing and pulling this piston in and out. Now, I really want you to focus on two things. What are we given and what are we trying to find? So the key thing that we're given, other than a couple of lengths, is that the crankshaft rotates counterclockwise at a constant rate of 200 revolutions per minute. As soon as you see the word rate, you should be thinking, oh, that's going to be some kind of DDT. So this is a rate of rotation. So we're talking about theta. So they are giving us d theta dt, the rate of change of theta with respect to time. Now let's turn this into radians instead of just revolutions. Obviously, every revolution is 2 pi radians. And there's 200 of those. So we're looking at 200 times 2 pi radians. So the uh, d theta dt is going to be 400 pi. So we are supposed to find the velocity of the piston. OK, I'll get to the last part in a second. but. We're supposed to find the velocity of the piston. So where does that come in? Uh, the velocity of the piston is going to be the rate of change of this little horizontal piece right here. So we better give it a variable. Let's just call it x. OK, so as the piston moves, the x value will change. So they are asking us to find dx dt, the rate of change of x. That will be the velocity of the piston. Uh, they're, so they're giving us this one extra piece of information. They, we want the velocity when theta equals uh, pi over 3. So I'll just tack this on at theta equals pi over 3. Now I'm just going to recopy this triangle separate from the picture so we can see it better. Now, don't forget, we are given that the length of the crankshaft is 3 inches and the length of the connecting rod is 7 inches. So if we want an equation connecting the x and the theta, we can use the law of cosines. So remember, for the law of cosines, uh, you're always going to start with the side that's across from the angle that you're dealing with. So we're going to start with the 7, and then uh, the law of cosines begins to look a lot like uh, the Pythagorean theorem. So it's, it goes 7 squared is equal to uh, x squared plus 3 squared. But then it tacks on this extra part, minus 2 times x times 3. Uh, you know what, just for fun, I think I'll put 2 times 3 times x. Cosine of the angle, which in this case, of course, is theta. So that's what the law of cosines would look like. Uh, we might as well go ahead and simplify this a, a tiny bit. So. This is going to be 49 is equal to x squared plus 9 minus 6x cosine theta. So as we often do, we're going to use implicit differentiation and uh, we will differentiate both sides of this equation so that we can get uh, d theta dt and dx dt to appear. So if I differentiate the left side of the equation, I'm going to have this uh, d dt 
right here. As I differentiate the right hand side of the equation, uh, I'm going to have a d dt on every part of this. In fact, um, maybe I'll spread it out. So you can see that the previous equation had four terms to it. One, two, three, four. So I've got these four d dt's. Um, the only thing I did a little bit different, I took the six because it's a constant, I moved it out in front. So I'll do the derivative of the x times cosine theta with the constant out in the front like you do. Of course, the derivative of any constant is just going to be zero. So this term is going to become zero. And similarly, this term will really disappear on the next step. So we're going to end up with zero equals. So uh, the derivative of x squared, the power rule will put that two in the front. So I'm going to have two x. Notice that these variables do not match. So we have to use the chain rule and multiply by the derivative of the inner function, which will just be dx dt. All right, this is gone. So that brings me up to the minus 6. Uh, but watch out. Here we have the derivative of a product. So we need to do the product rule. So let's remember how the product rule works as I create a little space for this. For the product rule, uh, we're going to end up taking the derivative of the first term, well, the first uh, factor, while leaving the second factor alone. So uh, I'm just going to set it all up. So we're going to wind up doing the derivative of the x while leaving the cosine alone. But then we're going to add, and the second time through, we're going to leave the x alone, and we're going to take the derivative of the cosine. So we'll have d dt, and you know, I thought I left myself enough space, but I need a little tiny bit more. We'll wind up taking the derivative of the cosine. All right, we're doing the product rule. So um, let's just recopy and do the derivatives as we go. Well, there's really only only uh, one that's really going to change. Anyway, we're going to have 0 equals. And uh, so I've got this 2x times dx dt. Uh, we'll keep that minus 6 out there. Now, the derivative of x, it's just a single variable, so all we can really do with that is put dx dt. Okay, times cosine theta, just bringing all that down. And then we have plus x, but the derivative of cosine is negative sine. So I'm going to have times negative sine theta. But these variables do not match. So I'm going to have to use the chain rule and multiply by the derivative of the inner function, uh, which will just give us d theta dt. And don't forget that all of this is being multiplied by 6. By the way, don't forget to memorize the derivatives of these trig functions. For example, there's the one that we just used just now. Derivative of cosine is negative sine. See how useful that is? Now, I want to make one slight change, and I don't feel like recopying the entire thing just for this. But if I have x times negative sine, can we all agree that that will be the same thing as negative x sine theta. I'm just taking the negative and putting it out front. All right, I'm sure you won't mind negative x sine theta. Time to distribute this negative 6. So I'm going to have 0 
equals 2x dx dt minus 6 dx dt cosine theta. Now I'm going to have plus 6x sine theta, right? Because a negative times a negative is a positive. And uh, don't forget your d theta dt. Notice that all of these terms are divisible by 2. So I'm just going to do that real quick. OK, great. So now we have this. I'm remembering that we were given the value of d theta dt at the beginning of this problem. Remember, d theta dt is equal to 400 pi radians per minute. So I'm going to just substitute in 400 pi right here. It's time to get the dx dt terms on the left side of the equation and leave the non dx dt term on the right hand side of the equation. So if I drag the uh, negative 3 dx dt cosine theta over to the left, it will become a positive 3 dx dt. Cosine theta. And if I uh, subtract this term from both sides, I will have a negative x dx dt. And all of this will equal my non dx dt term, 3x sine theta times 400 pi. So the point of getting my dx dt terms on the left hand side is so that I can factor out the dx dt as a GCF. So I'm going to have my dx dt out in the front. And that's going to leave behind 3 cosine theta minus x. OK, maybe I'll go ahead and multiply these numbers together. So uh, 3 times 400 will be 1,200 um, x pi sine theta. I wasn't sure about what order to put those in. Uh, you know, in retrospect, I feel like putting the pi first. I'm sure it doesn't matter, but I'm going to put pi x sine theta. That makes me happy. So it is time to get the dx dt by itself by dividing both sides by 3 cosine negative x. So basically, I'm going to take this entire thing and I'm going to put it right there. So that brings us to this point in the story right here. But there's one piece of information that we have not quite used yet. We are supposed to find dx dt at theta equals pi over 3. So let's look at that moment in time and really zoom in on it when theta equals pi over 3. I'm going to borrow this picture so we can use it down here. OK, so we are supposed to find dx dt when theta is equal to pi over 3. Looking at this formula, we have two variables. We have x and we have theta. Well, we already know that uh, theta is going to end up being pi over 3 based on the question itself. So we're going to have a pi over 3 right there, and we're going to have a pi over 3 right here. What we don't know is x. So before we go any further, 
we need to find x. And when theta is equal to pi over 3, we should be able to do that. Let's set up the law of cosines again. So just like we did before, we will have 7 squared is equal to x squared plus 3 squared uh, minus 2 times 3 times x cosine of theta, but now theta is pi over 3. Simplifying this a little bit, we're going to have 49 is equal to x squared plus 9 minus 6x. Well, let's see. The cosine of pi over 3, you should have memorized, uh, is going to be 1 half. In fact, make sure that you have memorized all of the trig values on this chart. For example, the cosine of pi over 3 is 1 half. So anyway, that's going to turn this into a minus 3, because half of 6 is 3. So we will have 49. All right, I keep picking the large ink size by mistake. So we're going to have 49 is equal to x squared plus 9 minus 3x. All right, let's just put this in standard form. So I'm going to subtract 49 from both sides. All right, so that's going to give me 0 is equal to x squared. Uh, I'm going to put the negative 3x next, and that's going to leave negative 40. This looks like the type of thing that would be factorable. Let's give it a quick shot. x squared will factor as x times x. And 40 will factor, among other things, as uh, 5 times 8. And that will give me negative 3 if I pick a positive 5 and a negative 8 will give me the negative 3 that I'm looking for. By the zero product property, I can get solutions by setting x plus 5 equal to 0 and setting x minus 8 equal to 0 x minus 8 gives me x equals 8. So that's a solution. But x plus 5 gives me x equals negative 5. That is what we call extraneous. All right, x is a physical length. Uh, it cannot be negative. So x is equal to 8. So remember, we needed a value to substitute for theta and a value to substitute for x. We now know that x is 8. So all we need to do is rewrite this with um, these substitutions. So here is that same formula with the substitutions made. So now we have uh, dx dt is equal to 1,200 uh, pi times 8. Now the sine of pi over 3 is radical 3 over 2. And we'll have the cosine uh, of pi over 3, which is 1 half. So I'm going to have 3 times 1 half minus 8. Simplifying down a little bit, we get this. So multiplying by the reciprocal of negative 13 over 2 will bring us to this expression. And that is approximately equal to negative 4,018 inches per minute. And that is the speed of the piston when theta equals pi over 3. That was a crazy problem.